Now, it is my pleasure to introduce our guest for the evening. Uh, I first met Evan Laybourne at Scrum Gathering in Munich, Germany in 2016. He told me then about his plan to address a real gap in the agile landscape by focusing on business agility. Since then, he's founded the Business Agility Institute and staged several groundbreaking international conferences on that topic. I'm really excited to welcome Evan, joining us all the way from seven o'clock tomorrow morning in Melbourne, Australia, to share his knowledge and wisdom on the topic of certain uncertainty. Over to you, Evan. All right. Thank you, Tom. I'd completely forgotten about Munich. You're right. It was, oh, that, that, that was a lifetime ago. <laughs> um, good, I was about to say good morning, good afternoon, I believe for most of you, though, David Williams, Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> G'day, good morning. Um, I'm going to be pretty brief, pretty quick. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what is business agility and why you should care. Um, we're going to, th let's start with some things we're going to take for granted. Number one, let's just assume for the moment that agile with a capital A works, at least in a technology space. We know we've been doing it for 20 odd years. Let's also assume that the principles and the values by which the Agile exists and underpin everything that we talk about when it comes to Agile uh, are foundational. Now, if you're me, we just change the word, just get rid of the word software from, uh, from the values and the principles and replace it with stuff, working stuff, that'll do. All right? Products and services, working outcomes, customer outcomes, pick a, pick a phrase that works for you, but the principle the intent behind the principle remains the same. So for me personally, I've been talking business agility since about 2008, when uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Peter principle, uh, being promoted to your level of incompetence, that was me. I was a pretty decent, I've been using Agile since 2003, Scrum primarily, bit of Scrum, bit of XP, bit of FDD thrown in for good measure. This is before Kanban came on the scene. And I was a pretty good scrum master, team leader, project manager. Uh, yes, projects. I did write a book called No Project, so um, I know where on I speak. Um, but then I joined the Australian Public Service as a director. And suddenly I was in charge of a $35 million whole of government program, not looking after software teams, so there was a there was a software component to it, but this was about bringing different government agencies together uh, in a particular initiative. This was something that I was wholly unprepared for. And uh, I don't have time to talk about the whole arrogance of management. And I, I actually gave a talk earlier about like, why I was a really crappy manager and how I learned to not be a crappy manager, that's not this talk. Um, but what I did do at that point was go, well, actually my boss pointed out that I wasn't doing a good job, good boss, um, and made me then start thinking about, okay, what, I, like, what do I want to be? How do I fix this? So I looked at the problems that I was facing, coordination, collaboration, cooperation, three Cs, there you go. And these were the exact same problems that I'd had back in 2003, like running software teams. Right? That's why I'd originally started using Scrum. Right? This is why I'd originally started using XP because it helped me solve that problem. Now, if we're having the same problems at a business, would the same solution, Agile, help? Now, I made a mistake back then, and it took me a couple of years to realize I'd made a mistake. What I did then was I started doing what I now roughly call Agile business, not business agility. Right? I took Agile with a capital A right, and started applying it. And don't get me wrong, it did work. Right? Uh, we started doing sprints. Uh, in this whole 
government thing. We did stand-ups. We even did a variation of pair programming that I called pair work, um, which was uh, like writing documents, minutes to the minister. Uh, we paired on those. And that was actually, by the way, really effective. And my roast, well, I was going to say most recent, it's four years old now. But the last book I did with Shane Hasty, we pair wrote because it worked so well. Um, but it took me a couple of years to realize that I was missing the point. I was doing agile business, <laughs> but I wasn't being agile in business. And so that's where the distinction between agile business and business agility came about for me personally. And so this is around 2008. That's when I got promoted. So by about 2012, I'm off doing my own little thing, traveling the world. To be fair, I do, I've done most of my work across Southeast Asia. Um, I actually only moved back to Melbourne uh, in 2017 when I started the Institute. So what is business agility? I'm sure some of you are asking that question. Now let's see if this works with my green screen. Yes, it does. This is why I like green screens much better. Okay, business agility. This is the definition. It is a set of organizational capabilities behaviors and ways of working. Let me pause there. It's not practices. Business agility isn't a thing that you do. It's a thing that you are. It's, it's the capability that you create and the behaviors, the way that you act. Right? And use Beyond Budgeting, use Scrum, use Agile Marketing. It makes no difference. There's a hundred different ways to achieve something. Um, so go nuts. But if you're behaving in the right way, you have business agility that affords your business, your organization, as I said, I started this in government, so it doesn't have to be a commercial business, the freedom and flexibility. And I wrote this a bit old. We've changed the definition. It's now freedom, flexibility, and resilience to achieve its purpose. I'll pause there. Achieving your purpose is why you're in business. You're not in business to make money. Your customer and for those of you who have seen the domains of business agility, which I won't go into, but I'll share a link to, you'll know that the customer is at the center of the model because the customer is why you are in business. Now that customer might be a citizen for a government. It could be an abstract concept like the environment for a, for a not-for-profit organization or a community organization, but it is your purpose. An agile organization is one that no pandemic, no disruption, no Uber, no Airbnb. It may disrupt what you do, but it doesn't disrupt why you do what you do, which is how you can actually continue. Which is then brings us to the last point, no matter what the future brings. Uh, I don't need to predict the future. I can't predict the future. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, what I can do is say, I can be ready for whatever the future brings. And it will bring, COVID-19 is not the first disruption to have hit the world in the last 20 years, and it won't be the last. It has the unique privilege of disrupting every industry simultaneously, <laughs> um, but beyond the scale, it is just one amongst many, and there will be more. Uh, hopefully not quite this bad, but your industry, your company, will be disrupted again within 10 years. I don't know when and I don't know how, but I don't need to, nor do you. You just need to be ready when it happens. So that's sort of what business agility is in a nutshell, sort of my own journey into it. I've only got 15 minutes. So there's so much nuance to this, right? I could talk about why you can't have a framework for business agility. Long story short, because a process is simple, or complex or, or, or complicated, it can be documented and repeated. A company is a complex adaptive system. You can't document a company and then replicate it. So you cannot create a framework that is repeatable. Anyway, so all right, there, there you go. I did answer that question, why you can't have a framework for business agility. Um, because there are way too many and your own organization is unique. But what I do want to leave you, I want to give you something very, very tangible uh, before we head over to the Q&A. And that is, why and where? Um, so for those of you who have explored Lean, uh, there is a book by Eli Goldratt called The Goal. Uh, in it, he introduces the concept of theory of constraints. Uh, theory of constraints is very simple. 
it says that in a process, there's a constraining factor. Now let's say we are building cars. It's a production line. It's lean, lean manufacturing. Um, and it takes us four minutes to install the wheels, but five minutes to install the engine, all right? Cars are gonna roll off that production line every five minutes. There is no point in hiring coaches or investing in a transformation in the wheel team, because right? that's not the constraint in the system. So instead, we need to focus on the engine team. Now, let's say we take the engine team, we optimize it, we put in a coach, we transform, and we get that down to installing an engine every three minutes. The corollary to theory of constraints is that there is always a constraint. All right? So now, even though the engine is being installed in three minutes, it takes four minutes for the cars to roll off the production line because the wheel team takes four minutes to install. And I really should have a model car when I give this uh, with a tell that metaphor. So I want to extend this. And with apologies to Eli Goldratt, Evan's theory of agile constraints. An organization can only be as agile as its least agile division. And that's not technology anymore for most organizations. So think about that. 20 years ago, it would take years to being a product to market. And so we invent agile. Makes sense. When I was doing agile, we didn't have DevOps. We had continuous integration, but it, we were doing Scrum. We were deploying not to production every two weeks, but to staging every two weeks because we had to relate, wait for a release window. That was every three months if we were for a minor release or every six months for a major release. Um, so our actual deployment, uh, our actual engagement with the customer, where our feedback was coming from, was every three months. Now, the world then develops DevOps. DevOps as a set of techniques and principles and so forth was a way of addressing the constraint. So now Amazon statistic, they deploy to production every 11 point something seconds, all right, fantastic. But now let's fast forward to today. We no longer have an environment where in many organizations and your organization may still have constraints in technology, but for a lot of organizations, all the investment in Agile and Agile coaches has reached diminishing returns and probably reached diminishing returns three or four years ago because the constraint to agility is somewhere else. In my experience, HR. Right? If it takes you three to four months to get a hiring ticket and recruit the right person to do a critical piece of work, you're not constrained by how quickly you can deploy or how agile your teams are. You're constrained by how quickly you can recruit. Finance. Right? Um, if it takes you nine months to get a budget change approved, your agility is not measured in days, weeks, or seconds. Your agility is measured in months, in some cases, years. If you're a regulated environment, sometimes compliance is the constraint. Your compliance teams. Um, banks, um, banks are a, a, a good example of this. And then sometimes it's sales and marketing. Uh, where the sales team and the marketing team are disconnected, fundamentally disconnected from product or service, whatever you're selling. And so depending on your organization, there's going to be a constraint. Those are four examples that, in my experience, are very common constraints for organizations. And I should note, it's not as simple as a single process. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Theory of constraints, you'll be familiar with value stream maps. You probably want to look at things like value stream networks because this isn't a linear flow anymore. All right? So it's a metaphor, don't take it as reality. But the point is, and the point still stands, that your agility in your organization is constrained by something in the business. And for most of you, that won't be where your coaches are being deployed right now. That's my two cents. <laughs> And that's what I've definitely been experiencing. All right. Yeah, I think I'm just, just going over the 15 minute mark. How was that? You, you did well, actually, Evan. You had another minute uh, to go, but, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. We, we'll, we'll do it in the questions. A few folks have already uh, ca captured the idea that uh, they've attended an Agile TO meetup before. And so I've already got um, a couple of questions that have made it in the chat window. Feel free, folks, if you do have questions, uh, to throw them in the chat window. I, I've made a few notes here as we've been going along, Evan, as well. Um, and I'd love to maybe start with with perhaps you know the the elephant in the room. 
Um, you know what, before I do that, you drink your coffee for a second. I'm just going to plug, put a plug in for uh, the book that Evan mentioned. A couple of years ago, this is actually the graphic novel version of it. So it's, it's written like this, and it's a fantastic read uh, because uh, the book itself is, is, well, let's just say that the graphic novel version of it is a lot easier to read. It's, cool. it's definitely a book of its era. <laughs> yeah, Karen, yeah, Karen, that's the, that's the book. Uh, that's the graphic novel, uh, the goal. That's the graphic novel version of it. Right on. Uh, anyway, uh, the goal is the name of the book. Um, but let me let me start with probably the the hardest question, Evan. I think that we're going to get tonight, and a couple of people have have posted this to me in the chat as well as me writing it down. Um, business agility is 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 a great um, way to deal with that uncertainty. It's a great way to 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 deal with these things, and and it is tough when you can only be as agile as the um, uh, as that as the weakest link um, in the organization. How does that play into publicly traded companies where they are focused on the stock price and the dividend and what's going to happen this quarter or next quarter? And there isn't that long term vision of how do we actually improve um, our organization beyond the next three months? So that's a it's a misnomer. Look at Microsoft and full disclosure, I used to hate Microsoft. I was an open source person. I, back when I was when I was a techie, I ran the Australian Open Source Developers Conference for two years. Um, it was a volunteer thing, so it it jumped around. So I ran it twice. Um, so I up until recently, I was running Ubuntu on my on my laptop. Uh, Microsoft today, I have nothing but the utmost respect for. Right? In part because of their agility, but in part because they actually became customer centric. Right? Their market cap has jumped. It has skyrocketed. All right? Amazon and Apple were the first companies to cap uh, to, 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 to go over the $1 trillion market valuation. Right? Publicly listed companies. Right? These are agile organizations. Are they perfect? No. All right? I would never look to... I'd look to Amazon as an example of customer centricity, but not for employee centricity. Right? So they definitely have uh, weaknesses in many aspects. Right? But do they have agility? Yes, they do. Right? So I think this is where a lot of it has to be. This is where that consideration is. Organizations choose to be narrowly focused. It's not whether they're publicly listed or not. Right? And in fact, those publicly listed companies that are making the most money are the ones who are agile. Uh, Apple and Amazon having being the two that broke the $1 trillion cap. Right? So um, one thing I will also note uh, in the domains, one of the domains is the board of directors because we do believe that the board of directors is an integral part of any business agility transformation um, or, or journey, I should say, because I actually don't like the word transformation. Um, it's very hard and there are very few cases where this has been done really effectively. The cases that we do have are mostly smaller, organ like a couple of thousand people, not hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but if your board isn't agile or doesn't care about agility, doesn't matter whether you're publicly listed or privately listed, right? If your board doesn't care, you will have a natural limitation, uh, like a natural constraint coming out of the board. Fascinating. Okay, we're going to have to dig into uh, those domains of business agility. That sounds really interesting um, and sounds like something I want to read up more on. <laughs> Sorry, there's a joke there for folks who don't know. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later. But maybe before we do, there's a couple of other questions um, that, that have come through. Um, the chat window is here. Maybe you could talk a little bit about um, the disruptions um, that, that are going on within industries. And I'm not talking here about things like COVID or, or, or those types of things. But uh, when I think about Canada specifically, um, I think about banks or telcos being so highly regulated and protected that there is no one disrupting in that industry space right now. I'm wondering what you've seen or what, what impetus there might be for an organization that really has no competitors. Uh, or very few real competitors. 
And then just to make the question even harder, when they do have a competitor, they just buy up that competitor and bring them into <laughs> their own world. So, ah, those are damn good questions. Um, First of all, I'll challenge the statement that companies don't have, that, that these regulated environments don't have competitors, right? So uh, there are cases where that's true and I will address that, right? But first I just wanna go, uh, so I used to live in Singapore um, and Singapore is a very high, highly regulated, the monetary authority of Singapore is very strict, all that kind of stuff. Um, banks in Asia were heavily disrupted when uh, fintech started to emerge 10, 12 years ago. And specifically in Asia, the international remittance fintechs, right, like Western Union, but like a thousand times better, um, where all the expats right, who were sending money home, whether they were sending it to the Philippines or to Australia, right, pretty much overnight stopped using the bank's international remittance services because they sucked. They were expensive. They were it took like four or five days, if not two or three weeks sometimes. They were very expensive, like sometimes 1% and like 20 bucks, 25 bucks to do that international bank transfer. Whereas like Paytm and these other sort of uh, small fintechs would just go, it'll be there the next day and it'll cost you uh, like three to th three, th $3, $5. 0.3 of a percent, pick your number. Uh, and they were just really fast, really cheap, really efficient. And so the banks were disrupted, not by another bank, but they were disrupted by someone taking a slice of their business, death by a thousand cuts, right? And so they're scared. The banks were also scared of Alibaba, Apple, and Amazon, because they were scared of the disruption coming from the non-banking sector. Now, fear is not a good motivator. It is a motivator, but it's not the best one. I generally try and use, uh, for these organizations, I try and get them to focus on what's important, which is their customer, right? And we, we, start, we use the word thrive in uncertainty, not survive in uncertainty. Uh, so how can they grow in the midst of a global pandemic in a good way, right? Versus how do they just react and survive? And there's an entire, I can, I could spend half an hour just talking about the difference between reacting and responding to change. Responding being good, reacting being bad. Um, the other thing I'll, so I do, however, want to say there are organizations who don't have competitors. And a good example is the government. So um, we're launching a, a, a new research model. Uh, it's, it's, it's underpinning our business agility profile, a company evaluation that we're about to launch. And in this, we've got an entire research model that's going through peer review. One of the peer reviewers is, um, uh, uh, I'm gonna be careful what I say, one of the heads of the Australian government digital transformation. Right? And his feedback has been really good in reminding us that not every industry can be disrupted. Right? The government, right? they don't care about disruption. They don't want to disrupt. They don't want to be the disruptor, which was one of the behaviors and the capabilities. It's the ability to thrive and be the disruptor. So we actually change that because you're right. There are contexts where that's not important. But what he did remind us, and this is why it's been so good um, working with him as one of the peer reviewers, is that even though they don't disrupt, they do want to innovate and they do want to create a positive experience for the citizens. So again, it goes back to reminding people why they're in business. And it may not, you may not have a disruption or an external motivator, but you still have that fundamental, like you're here because you're trying to do a good job. And let's just focus in on that. And for government, for example, that works, right? Because they actually do care about what the citizens think about them. Fascinating. What an awesome answer. We're getting close to 6.30 Eastern time. Um, and so I'm just going to put a plug in, folks, for those of you that do want to drop off to make sure that you uh, fill out the survey. There's a link posted in the chat uh, if you can take a minute to provide the organizers uh, your feedback. 
and the uh, YouTube video, uh, uh, you can you can find this and many others on there. But I'm not quite done, Evan. If you're if you're good for another couple of questions, there's uh, there's two more I'd love to uh, I'd love to get through. Um, so hopefully, folks, you can stick around for just a moment or two, um, because I'd love it if maybe you could talk about Evan some of the techniques or methods you've seen coming from Agile or elsewhere um, that that organizations have been able to apply in non tech domains, um, in business domains. So going back to the agile business versus business agility, um, so pairing. Pairing has been very effective. I do it a lot in things like writing. Um, when we look at techniques between like Scrum and Kanban, and obviously there's a distinction between if you can batch work, Scrum can be effective. If you can't batch work, then you can't use Scrum because you can't do two week sprints. Uh, one week sprints or whatever else but um that's the ability to iterate but the most important capability or, or practice i should say sorry is the retrospective um and it doesn't matter what function what's what skill set uh, continuous improvement and the forms of continuous improvement are the most valuable practices agile did a really good job of codifying that and don't get me wrong, continuous improvement didn't, wasn't invented by Agile, right? These ideas have been around for a long time. Uh, in Lean, you talk about quality circles, right? But um, the retrospective as a formalized ceremony is something that Agile does really well. And a lot of business functions are starting to adopt them at both in organizational levels as well as team levels outside of technology. Evan, I'd love it if maybe in the couple of minutes that we have left here, if you can just maybe introduce us to those domains of business agility and maybe give us an idea as to where we can find out more information on this. So, um, yes, uh, I don't have time to go into them. This is a characteristic model of an organization. I think of it as the don't forget model. If you're going to transform a business, here are the things not to forget. Um, the... Uh, you can download it from our website, uh, businessagility.institute, which I just alt-tabbed, and I think our website is down, so I'm going to have to go deal with that after this. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there, because uh, I'm getting a server error when I go to our website. But if you go to businessagility.institute, like the second link on the homepage is the domains, and you can access it, and you can download that. Um, also, very quickly, um, uh, we are a community organization. We're a membership organization. So I do invite you to be a, to become a member, to join, to access our library. We have hundreds of case studies and reference materials, guides on all things related to business agility. We're a research organization. We have 15 research teams, all volunteers or universities. Um, and uh, you can download all of the research that we published. Thank you, Tom. Um, so yeah, that, oh, and I know you're probably going to mention it, but I'll, I'll jump ahead. Um, we do have a conference coming up in New York City in March next year. Uh, it's in person. There will not be a virtual component. <laughs> Vaccines are mandatory. <laughs> right, so let me just get those out of, <laughs> um, out of the equation right now. So I hope Canadians would travel. <laughs> and and taking it back. Tickets for that are on sale right now through your website as well. I, is that right? Correct. Tickets are on sale right now. The call for speakers is also open. Uh, so right now we have what we call our supporter tickets, which is for people who want to buy a ticket when we don't have a program launched. Um, uh, though this is the fourth, fifth year we've done it. So very cool. Um, yeah. If you if you know someone who has a good story. We're also looking for speakers. So please consider pointing them or yourself to the call for papers or call for stories as well. You recently just uh, just started uh, a magazine as well, or a, yeah. a little bit of a, a pamph a book that you've been uh, you've been sending <laughs> out. Um, and you've just published, is it your third version, your third issue of it? Uh, technically we just published the fourth, but fourth. it's in the post right now. So you 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 probably haven't received it yet. But um, so Emergence. This is our magazine. Um, and, and it contains Old stories. It contains stories of business agility throughout uh, the world. Yeah. Stories, no advertisements. Um, we made that decision. Um, uh, 
for those of you who are writers, uh, we actually, during COVID, we launched a publishing imprint. We can actually do books now. And as part of that, we have the magazine. So if you're interested in writing for us, come and have a chat. If you're interested in reading, right, check out the books that we have and, the, and do think about subscribing to Emergence, the journal, either digitally or, or, in, or print. Evan, this is great. There, there are a million more questions that I, I, I know we could do, but I know it's, it's early in the morning for you. You probably haven't even had uh, Brecky yet, so I'll make sure that, uh, that, uh, that we, we do wrap this up. Um, folks, I want to thank you all for joining the call tonight or this morning, depending on where you're calling in from. Um, but since it is a Toronto meetup, I'm going to pretend that we're all in Toronto. Um, so thank you for joining. Evan, thank you so much for your time. There's a lot of resources that you've just given us uh, mm -hmm. references to um, for us to check out to learn more. Uh, and I suspect there's going to be a lot of, uh, of follow-up from this. Um, again, folks, remember there is a feedback form and a YouTube channel. The feedback form is in the chat window. Please take a moment to uh, share your thoughts with us uh, and the organizers uh, and, uh, and appreciate everyone's time. Uh, in two weeks, we'll do this again, another quick talk on another topic. Evan, thank you again. Really, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, introduce this. I'm going to go read up on those business uh, domains of business agility. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, please check out the website when it comes back up once I go talk to our developers. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. A pleasure to meet you all.